In this last example, we're going to look at this piecewise defined function. And we're going to do a bit of investigation on constructing this function g, the integral function. And then look at sketching its graph and deciding if it's differentiable or not. So maybe a first step would be Let's just see what the function f looks like. We're not asked to sketch its graph of the graph of f until part b, but that's all right. We can sketch it now. For x less than 0, the function value is 0, so it's screaming along here. And then from 0 to 1, so up to 1 here, it's just a linear function. And then from 1 to 2, it's also a linear function, but now it's going uh, now it's with negative slope. So it goes down, and then bigger than 2, it's still 0. So that's 2, and that's 1, and we had a height of 1 here. And now we want to construct this function g. So we're going to find a function, the expression for the function g. And since f is defined in different ways on a bunch of different intervals, then we're going to do the same thing for g. So we're going to look at the different intervals. For x less than 0, what is g equal to? Well, g is defined to be this integral. When x is less than 0, I only care about what the definition of f is on the interval from 0 to x. And in this case, it's always 0. So this is the integral from 0 to x of 0, dt or 0. So the function g for x less than 0 is always 0. And that makes sense because if we think about it, the function g is supposed to represent the area so far under the function f, but the function f is 0 here. So no matter on what interval you're looking at over here from 0 to whatever value, it's got no height, so there's going to be 0 area. So the answer is 0. What about for x between 0 and 1? Well, here, g of x, we're looking at is the integral from 0 to x, f of t dt. When x is between 0 and 1, the fun uh, this interval from 0 to x, the function f is given by just x itself. So this is the integral from 0 to x of t dt. The integral would then be 1 half t squared from 0 to x, or in other words, 1 half x squared. So there's the description of g for x values between 0 and 1. What about for x between 1 and 2? Well, g of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. Now, if x is between 1 and 2, then our integral is going to go from 0 all the way out to 1, and then from 1 to x. And I have to split it up because the function f is defined differently on those intervals. So I integrate from 0 to 1, and then I integrate continuing on from 1 out to x. The integral from 0 to 1 of f of t dt, well, I, in some, some sense, I just worked that out in the previous one. x was allowed to be anything from 0 to 1, and in fact, I could have had it equal to there and I would have gotten a value of 1 half. So that first integral I can get by just plugging 1 into the previous one. Plus the integral from 1 to x. What's the next one? f of t is 2 minus t dt. Now that's 1 half. The integral is then 2t minus 1 half t squared, and that's going from 1 to x. So this is then 1 half plus, and now we pop the values in, 2x minus 1 half x squared minus 2 minus 1 half. And now a little bit of cleaning up. That's a negative 1 half x squared plus 2x. And now I've got a negative 2 plus a half plus another half. So it's a negative 2 plus 1, so that's a negative 1. And we can leave it like that, or we can simplify it down to negative 1, negative 1 half x minus 2 squared plus 1. That's another way to write that expression. Now, this, this way of writing is going to help me when I 
go to sketch its graph because now I see it's a parabola and I know where it's been translated to. What about the last one for x bigger than 2? Well, g of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. Here, my integral has to go from 0 to 1 of f of t dt plus the integral from 1 to 2 of f of t dt plus the integral from 2 to x of f of t dt. I have to split this integral up because for x bigger than 2, the f description changes. It's defined to be x on one portion, 2 minus x on another one, and then 0 on the rest. Now to work out these integrals, I've, I can just compute them as I've, I've done above. All the information is really above here. Um, one thing I could notice as well, and this might be a good time to sort of come back to the picture, is we're now looking at an x value out here, and we're integrating from 0 all the way out to that x value. So it doesn't really matter where the x value is, because once it passes 2, the rest of the uh, integrals are always going to give values of 0. So I only care about the integral from 0 to 2, and that's just going to be the area of this region here. And the area of this region, well, we know half of it already is a half, so the other one's a half due to symmetry, so the area of that whole region is 1. And so this has a value of 1. It's just the area under, under the curve. And so therefore, we have that g of x is equal to well, it's 0, 1 half x squared, negative 1 half x minus 2 squared plus 1, and 1 if x is less than 0, if x is between 0 and 1, if x is between 1 and 2, and if x is bigger than 2. So there's our function g. Now what does the graph of it look like? We've got the graph of f above. The graph of g is 0 all the way along, and then it becomes this parabola out to 1, which has a height of a half, and then it becomes this next parabola, which is shifted upside down, has a vertex now at 2, way up here of height 1, and it just matches up nicely with that one. And then once you hit the vertex, it then continues along straight. And so there's the sketch of our graph g. That's y equals g of x. y equals g of x. So what's our next question? Well, our next question is, where is f differentiable? Where is g differentiable? So that's part c. So f is differentiable differentiable everywhere except except at x equal and we can get this from the graph I'm going to go all the way up here where is it not differentiable at these corners it's not differentiable at 0 1 and 2 so f is not differentiable at x equals 0, 1, and 2. Where is g differentiable? Are there any places where g isn't differentiable? Well, g is differentiable everywhere. Why is it differentiable everywhere? I mean, it looks like a nice smooth graph. How do I know there's not some corners here where I've joined these things up? Well, it's differentiable everywhere because, well, what's its derivative? What's the derivative of g? The derivative of g is just f. Okay. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus part 1. It says if I construct this function g in this way, then its derivative is just the function f again. So g is differentiable everywhere because its derivative is just f. We've constructed the function g, so it is differentiable everywhere. 
Right? So that's it for this example and this lecture. So thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.